In 2016, we drove across Canada with three Huskies. It was the trip of a lifetime, until it wasn't. The trip was amazing until both Montana and I ended up in hospital. I had always had this dream that I wanted to go across Canada. I don't think it would have ever happened though had I not gotten sick. I started to have health issues in 2015 and I thought I was getting better. And you have this sort of like come to Jesus moment where you're like, I've got to do all the things that I always said I'd do. And then coming off of being sick, I was like, and let's go. And we, we did, and then we were on the road. So our plan for the trip was to drive from the far tip of the west coast to the far tip of the east coast. So coast to coast across Canada. All I know is that when we got back there was 22,000 kilometers extra on our car. I'm sure it's slightly less than that, but we were probably like driving in circles a little bit. What was really cool about the trip is one minute we'd be camping on the beach on, on the Pacific Ocean. Our tent opened up onto the water. We were beach camping and then literally the next day, we're in a desert area. And, and then the next, next day, in the mountains. Like the Rocky Mountains. What are you guys looking at? Day after that, it's, we're in the it's grasslands. grasslands and prairies. As a Canadian, I've always known that Canada has all these different types of topography and scenery and all that stuff, but I don't think it really sinks in until you've traveled and seen all, all of them kind of in succession like that. When you get in the car and you drive that, it becomes real, like in a very visceral way where you're like, will this, like when you're driving through the prairies, which are very flat, and you can literally, the joke is that you can literally see into the next province, you feel it. This is Saskatchewan. That's really it. And it doesn't matter how much, you know, how many mix CDs you put together or whatever, uh, you know, playlists, whatever. <laughs> mix CDs. What is this, 1999? Shut up. Um, it doesn't matter how much you try to plan for some of the sort of like longer, like long haul drives. It's a long drive and you're doing it in hatchback with three dogs. Minty, does it look like it when we went across Canada? Yeah, right in. So this is what it was like when we were going across Canada, usually with a dog somewhere in between both of us. The three dogs would be sat in the back seat, kind of like three humans would if you were sitting three humans in the back seat of a car. Dustin and I would be up front, all of our luggage and our cooler and all of our food would be in the back and then all of the camping equipment would be up top. So imagine this, like this level of cramp, five to six hours a day driving in a car every day for two and a half months. It was a lot. We had always allotted, oh, we can do this amount of hours a day, but you'd get to a certain point and they'd be like, we're done for the day. And then you'd have to stop and walk or do things that were out of your schedule yeah. on the side of the highway. And <laughs> in the middle of nowhere in Saskatchewan. Yeah. Obviously there's stuff that's gonna go wrong and you have to be able to. Like snakes. Like snakes. So we were supposed to camp in a place called Riding on Stone Provincial Park in Southern Alberta. It's the desert there. Sonia knew this. Sonia knows that there's rattlesnakes there. For some reason, the day of when we start like approaching the park, she just freaks out. She's like, I can't stay here. We're driving down the street, <laughs> and all of a sudden you start seeing these signs. It's like, rattlesnake breeding ground. Don't run over the rattlesnakes. I'm like, how prevalent are these rattlesnakes that they have to put signs up every half a kilometer to tell you not to run them over? Like, are they everywhere? So like, I'm thinking we pitch a tent, and then everything from that moment on is going to be keeping dogs away from rattlesnakes. It's the wilderness. It's not. Uh, a pit from an Indiana Jones movie, okay? So there was challenges. It was mostly the dogs, but sometimes Sonia. Sometimes. And sometimes Dustin. Not often. <laughs> you got it, Ice? Don't let Eve get it. <laughs> With any trip, 
if there's camping involved, you're inevitably gonna run into like weather issues and stuff like that. But having the three dogs is sort of a, an extra hurdle to overcome. Not everywhere is accepting of having three Huskies being in a hotel or an Airbnb or, you know, even campsites, some of them wouldn't allow dogs. So it was interesting to try and like piece that together. And if you couldn't make it to one of those places, what would you do, right? And we got super lucky with like, anytime we had to bail out of campsites because of the, the weather, almost every single time we were able to either find somewhere that was totally fine taking the dogs or we had like a backup plan with uh, our Airbnb or something like that and it just it seemed to work out every time so. There's Dustin giving Eber allergy medication. This is our view. I'm not really sure what it is. It's a bridge that goes to the States. I think to Michigan. Are you gonna say good night? Say good night. I remember being in downtown Ottawa and sort of coming up the hill towards Parliament and as you approach it, you sort of get this weird, or I did anyways, got this weird sense of like, I was super proud to be Canadian. It was cool because it like, you walked up to Parliament Hill and, and it, it almost felt familiar in a sense because you see it so much on TV and it's like the most prominent building I would say in Canada. And you just sort of feel like, you know, like, oh, Canada's gonna start blaring in the background. I'll give you a panorama view here. We're standing at Parliament. There's Dusty. There's these three little ninjas. They think the ground is very cool. The dogs really liked Ottawa. We really liked Ottawa. We almost, we, when we came back, we thought we might move to Ottawa. Yeah, we talked about it a little bit. But we were there in the summer and we were like, maybe when the snow's here, we will not like this so much. Funny how like minus 60 might change your mind. Yeah. You see those specks hitting the uh, windshield? Yeah, it's snowing. There's so many cool places that we went to. And I think that was one of the highlights of the trip for us is just getting to experience all those things and then embrace them. One of the things that was the most important to me on the trip, and, and Dustin found this weird, but I think thought it was really cool, is um, up until that point, the dogs had been quite young and still kind of unpredictable off leash. But I really wanted to explore places on each coast where they could run free on the beach and, and play in the ocean. And so when we were in Tofino on the west coast, the dogs got to run on the beach and play in tidal pools and do all that kind of stuff. And then on the east coast, when we were in Alma, New Brunswick, um, which was the first time we hit the Atlantic Ocean. So there was this amazing beach that when the tide went out, there was miles of open sand. And there's these amazing pictures we have of the dogs running across the beach and splashing in the water. And to have the dogs be able to do that on both coasts, kind of like framing the country, was I think the highlight of the trip for me. And those are two of my favorite moments. So we got to the East Coast, we're eating lobster rolls, eating chowder, like it's literally like everything we imagined the East Coast would be. And we left there and we were heading to the Bay of Fundy, which is these big rock formations out mushroom, in the ocean yeah. that everyone comes to visit. And we're pulling into the parking lot and we realized that Montana is sick. So she ended up having a really bad ruptured anal gland. And she had to have we had to take her to, we had to rush to the nearest town to get her to see a vet. And then she had to wear diapers after that because they couldn't close it up without it infecting. So um, she had to wear diapers for several days. We had to change all of our plans from camping and find hotels so that she wasn't getting it dirty. It's just a nightmare. What are you doing, funny girl? Where's your crazy sister? Is she over there? There she is. Newfoundland is like one of the coolest places you could ever go to. So if you've never been, I suggest it highly. The fjords there and stuff, it literally looks like the land before time. It's so cool. We were walking on the Earth's mantle, which is something you can do in very few places on the globe. Are you gonna roll in the snow? We were on our way back from Newfoundland 
and we got hit with like one of those stereotypical like northern Atlantic crazy storms where the rain is like coming down in buckets and it's sideways and wind. The sheer force of the rain coming down when it can like hurt things or damage things or injure you, like that's serious rain and that's what we were dealing with. We ended up in the town where we would be like embarking from to go back to the mainland and there's nothing there. And we had, I think, close to 12 hours before departure. So it was, we had to like juggle stuff in the car to try to make some extra space so that we could have the dogs have a bit more room to stretch out. But this meant that we had to have everything under our feet. You know when you get everything settled and then you realize that your phone charger is underneath your butt? So I needed to sort of like prop myself up to, to like weasel it out from underneath me. And I put my toe on the windshield and I guess I pressed a little bit and the whole windshield. I just heard a huge pop and then the windshield just, I looked at it and it was like spider webs everywhere. <laughs> and that was fun because Dustin was not happy with me then. Well, so that was the point in the trip it. where <laughs> Dustin like, was like, Done, I'm done. I mean, everything on the trip always got better to that point and it did again. Were you scared of the water? And then a few days later, we were supposed to be camping again. You know, we'd always be able to catch up until that point, and then at that point, it was like the things started to pile on top of each other. We're supposed to be camping in uh, Quebec, and we got hit with another rainstorm. Set up camp at like 10 or 11 at night. In the dark. In the dark, and then woke up at like 2 in the morning with everything floating in the tent and our tent was soaking wet, the dogs were soaking wet, all of our belongings were soaking wet, there was not a single thing dry, and we had nowhere to go, and there was days before we could go anywhere else, and we were like, this is the end. And then that's when the trip started to sort of snowball into like this, you know, we'd always be able to catch up until that point. Our Airbnb allowed us to come several days early and didn't charge us for that, which was, I mean, at that point, we were like, thank, thank the Lord. We got to Quebec where we had this warm little beach house with like a rain shower and like all these amazing things. And I think we got there and got the dog settled. What? What's so funny? Ah. Got the stuff settled. We breathed a big sigh of relief because we finally like sort of got to somewhere that was safe and we were going to be dry. And then I ended up in hospital. My illness reared its ugly head again. That was just like the final straw that yeah, broke the camel's back. I think at that point it was like, <clears throat> the trip wasn't over, but like it was the mentality or the mindset in the trip kind of changed and we were just like, okay, kind of like fun time is over. Let's just figure out how yeah. to survive the trip home as best we can and just kind of get home as quickly as possible. And it was like a recovery mission at that point. We didn't know what was going on with me and it was scary and I think that it caused a lot of stress and a lot of trauma, especially for Dust. To be responsible to get me and three dogs home, I couldn't really do a lot of anything, so he had to take the responsibility for all of that. We had this amazing trip across Canada and then it's like the whole world fell apart. Mm -hmm. 